So, how many of you have a bank card? Can you raise your hand? So, pretty much everybody. How many of you have more than one? Pretty much everybody. Who knows what is skimming? A few. How many know how it actually works? Two, three. Okay. Uh, so, I'll just give you a quick presentation of what actually happens and how easy it is to to actually steal your information. Anybody there give me a bank card of his? Me? Uh, can we just switch the screens? So this is a very simple, now uh, to the notepad. Quick review. It's a, this is a very basic uh, card card reader. It can be bought for I think it was two ninety nine from eBay. <laughs> the head that reads. This is a very standard uh, standard series model. You can have them as small as a, the pinhead of a needle. It's absolutely impossible to catch them uh, on how they can skip. Yay! Okay. So, a very simple swipe. Oh, Martin. You have so. That easily you can read all the information from the bank card. Great card number. I promise we'll delete it afterwards. Uh, you can see the bank details, the credit card number, the expiration date, everything that is necessary to clone a card. Afterwards, you, the only other thing that the, the criminals need that is just a pin code. This can be done either through a micro, cam a micro camera which is mounted on the ATM device or through a secondary keyboard. Um, so this is basically the issue of skimming. Um, can we go back to the presentation please? Yeah, thank you. Make sure they delete the... <laughs> So, Skimprod, it's a startup. We went through a lot of things and problems throughout the whole process, and it's not working. <laughs> no? Okay, so what is skimming? What is Bulgaria famous for in the sphere of skimming? By statistics, more than 40% of all skimming cases are done by Bulgarians. <laughs> we are the best in the branch. We're the best in the branch because we're very highly IT literate. And this helps a lot when trying to, to do the new things um, in the branch. And as you can see, if you type in uh, skimming in Google, most of the results will include Bulgaria as a keyword. <laughs> so not, not a good reputation we have over there. Um, This is a very small statistics of what is skimming and the scale of it. As you can see, 56% of all Mexicans, it's a country of 230 million, have been skimmed at least once in their lifetime. Brazil, USA, USA, 340 million, 320 million, uh, with a lot of literate people, good technology level, etc. 47% of the people have been skimmed at least once. So overall, with the statistics, it's a, every third person on this planet has had an issue with skimming. So it's, it's quite a good business for Bulgarians, 40% eh? of that market. Good, good. Ah, it's working. No, maybe it was here. Okay, so this is an overview of what the scale is. This is, I would like to note, it's uh, information from 2014. So up to 2017, there has been quite a bit of development, but basically on a yearly basis, uh, North America is losing around 3 billion uh, US dollars from such uh, cases and criminal activities. Europe is around uh, 1.5 billion, etc. From my last information, 2014 was around 11 billion, now it's up to 15. And this is based on the fact that a lot more uh, bank cards and credit cards are being distributed. 
Uh, currently, on a global level, there is around 10 billion cards around the world. This is expected to double in the next seven years. And this is mainly because of China and India. So there's a big potential, a big market for criminals, uh, a lot of illiteracy, which is at the end customer level, uh, which is also uh, giving an addition to, to, the, to this huge problem. Um, okay, it's working, so it's me. So basically what we do, um, we put a sticker about the magnetic stripe because this is the vulnerability of the pen cards. When you read it, there is a lot of zeros uh, and some other service codes which are needed and we redirect the transaction to be done through the EMV chip. The two technologies, they exist uh, purely because in a lot of places around the world, the infrastructure cannot read the EMV chip. So we are basically hiding the information from one place to the other, but it's not as simple as putting uh, a plastic label over the magnetic stripe. It actually has different layers, which we develop together with my colleagues. Uh, it has a protective stripe, a different magnetic stripe, which includes those codes, etc. So going back, uh, how it all started, we are four partners in the company. One of them is the real inventor. He just wanted to propose to the banks for them to have some additional branding on their bank cards. And he said, oh, you know, you all have uh, EMV chips. What do you need the magnetic stripe for? Let me make a product which is a basic sticker which you place above the magnetic stripe and we can use it for marketing purposes. And then he was speaking to a friend of his, Nikolai, who said, uh, oh, but you know, if you hide the information from the magnetic stripe, that way you cannot make the transaction, so you still need to have some type of information on it. Um, after a, a bit of prototyping, they realized that by hiding the information on the magnetic stripe, which is the vulnerability of the bank cards, they can actually prevent skimming. So after a bit of uh, prototyping at home, I think there was something around 10 to 15 cards being swallowed by different ATMs and trying to explain to the bank how you can lose three cards in one month. Um, they finally actually managed to get a, a good prototype and they, they submitted for a patent. Um, then um, myself and uh, my colleague Kamen, we work in a printing house that's uh, our family business and the product SkinProt is being produced based on the printing technologies. So with Nikolai we had uh, some other business we've done together he came to us and said um, can we make an industrial scale production of this? And um, we believed we had a really good synergy between their idea and what we could offer. They had a good idea which solves a great problem. Uh, we had the production technologies, the production equipment. So why not? So all the four of us uh, came together. We made a company. They imported the patent as their part of the um, contribution to the company. And we said, OK, well, have a budget of 150,000 lives. Let's see how far we can go. And uh, I've studied abroad for quite a while and I've learned a lot of uh, business this and business that. So we went to the usual SWOT analysis, the piece of marketing, blah, blah, blah. And everything was looking really, really bright. Uh, the product, it was solving a huge issue, which was multinational, it was a big, uh, negative image for Bulgaria as well. It was really easy to manufacture with, with what we already had as equipment. We had seen no technical problems. Uh, the price was, I think it might be even closer to 1000%. So we could make real money real quick, uh, no problem. Um, production I mentioned. And the banks. Our first idea was to sell the product to the banks because who would be a better person to sell to them to the banks. The banks, they're losing customer, customers due to this, they're losing money, they're losing other types of overheads, indirect overheads, staffing. Um, um, for example, every scheming case has to be reported in the Ministry of Interior, which Mevere, which afterwards is being, I think between six and 12 months, you have an open case, etc., etc. So the banks, they seemed like the perfect uh, customer for us. Uh, we were even thinking, oh, you know, as soon as we go out on the market, one of the big banks will want to buy us and will be instant millionaires. No, 
Um, so basically, we just wanted to be manufacturing the product and then just getting all the good benefits from it. Uh, and everything we had thought was gonna be okay with the product managed to go wrong. Everything. So, first off, we realized that there were actually standards in the banking industry, which we actually had to follow. And our product came now to be 20 microns thicker than what the standard allows us to. So we had to go back to the draw drawing board, board and uh, change, change the whole structure of the project. Then we started going abroad. Greece, Germany, Spain, England, and then it turned out that not all the banks were actually working with our product. There's a lot of banks which are a bit behind in the integration of the ENV technologies. There's, there turned out to be a lot of limitations. Packaging, which I think was a total nightmare. We went to five different companies in Bulgaria, renowned ones, and not a single one could tell us what should be on the package of the product. Ecobull Pack is the producer, uh, is one of the big uh, companies which buys reused paper, etc. They could not tell us whether we should put the, you know, the guy with the bin on our package. What color should we choose for? What size? Um, what should be inside? What should be in the instructions? We just couldn't find it. Uh, then came the topic of price. It came out that the banks, it was too high for, too high for them. Um, then I think the biggest, the biggest failure we had uh, was definitely with the banks because we met up with a lot of them uh, here in Bulgaria and it turned out that all the meetings, they were going really great. Um, at the start, on the marketing level, everybody liked the product because it could offer something very different to the, um, to the end customers. They could make uh, revenue out of it, etc. Then, um, on the security side with the IT departments, uh, everybody really liked it as well because it was solving a really, really big issue for them. But then, once we went through that middle level of the management of the banks who liked the product because it was practical and good, and uh, it just stopped all communication. And then we actually managed to realize that at the top level, the banks will never admit that there is a problem with the product. And, and that's the bottom line with, uh, with the banks uh, we've had. We went to an exhibition in, um, in Paris in 2014. Uh, it's the biggest exhibition for payment systems, etc. And there were so many companies who said, oh my God, this is such a good idea. We even had visits from Visa, from MasterCard, American Express, and everybody said, oh, great idea, but where are you from? Bulgaria. Oh. Are you sure you're not doing the opposite? I mean, like, you put a sticker and it sends automatically the information and it records my pink code. I'm like, if I could invent that, I wouldn't be talking to you. <laughs> so, in the end, uh, sadly, on the packaging, now if you turn it, it doesn't say made in Bulgaria, it says made in EU. <laughs> uh, we've tried to, to go away from that, and then again, it's the point for the banks. Uh, So, from all those negative things, and this is, I would say, the most important point which I'll try to give in with this lecture is that from everything bad comes out something good. Something which doesn't work means it could work better in another way, and you should always look at problems from different perspectives. For example, by revising the ISO standardization, we managed to optimize the material we use in the product by 20%, decreasing um, in the production cost. The packaging, which we did ourselves in the end, uh, reduced our cost by 40%. Um, for us, for example, which I mentioned uh, that the product was not fully capable in some markets, we've just decided to not, uh, not try to sell the product in those markets. Um, the price, uh, which I mentioned, that was too high for the banks, we, we decided to make a new product for the banks, which was a very minimal at packaging, and it also allowed us to decrease a lot the price, which was also affordable for the banks. Actually, with the banks, we had a breakthrough in South Africa. With Standard Bank, it's the biggest bank in Africa, and they really like the product. 
Um, so it's more of a matter whether you manage to to sell it to the right people only because you don't sell it to uh, you don't sell it here to a certain party. It doesn't mean it won't work in a different uh, country. Um, the biggest change we did was definitely to change our sales channels. Uh, we moved away from banks. We decided we've invested enough time, enough money, enough efforts to try to win them over, and we went into retail. Uh, retail, we're doing through partners, through retail stores. Um, over there, the big benefit for us is that um, there is a lot more margin to be able to, to cover. And we're also doing a lot of online um, activities and sales, uh, mainly here in Bulgaria. Um, I'll give you a better example of online. With online, when we decided to, to, to change our uh, sales channels, we said, okay, we'll make a big online store and we'll go to all the other countries. And we purchased for 75 countries the extension sales, key product, the, the, webs the um, domain names. 75, uh, 75 countries. You have any idea how much that is? And it ended up that for, the, for a year and a half, nobody even wanted uh, those domains. Um, so there's a lot more optimal ways you can, you can do that. And there is a lot of people nowadays who can also help you out with uh, suggestions uh, and so on. Um, in the next exhibition we actually went, we won the award for most innovative product in the industry. Uh, which just proves that you should try to push it and you should not give up only because uh, somebody tells you, you know, you're from Bulgaria, why are you selling this product? Um, and we actually beat companies who have about a billion of uh, turnover in the same category. Um, so the banks, we've scratched them out at all. Uh, retailers, they really like us because uh, maybe from, from the price range of 10 devs where our product is, we have around 30% of that, and all the 70% are left with the retailer. So they also have an incentive uh, to sell. And always try to, to motivate your uh, sales channels. Um, um, so my bottom line is uh, just keep innovating. Um, if you have a good idea, uh, keep working on it. Um, if you, if you, once you have a good idea, you also be a specialist in that specific market. Keep on looking around what is, what is suitable also to add to your portfolio. It's really important. Uh, for example, um, the contactless cards, which are pretty much 100% of the cards nowadays in Bulgaria, they were pretty much not present three years ago. So we developed a product when they became mainstream, we developed a product which stops, um, contactless theft. Because imagine, you're in the metro or on the bus and there's a guy with a post terminal in his pocket. He goes by and he checks you. One left, two left, five left, ten left. It's, it's also a very big business and Bulgarians have 90% over there. <laughs> um, so actually our complimentary product around Skipper, around the sticker, is selling nowadays better than the sticker is. And I would note for the process when you're developing your product, the most important thing is don't wait till it's perfect. The pro your product will never be perfect for you. It does not mean that it's not perfect for the rest of the world. Just put it out there that you get a lot of feedback and keep, keep on changing, keep on innovating. Um, I have a bit more experience with uh, physical products. So my suggestion is uh, if you have such, always keep a high price high margin of price because you have a lot more overheads than if you have an IT or an online based uh, business. Um, for the promotion part, don't, don't look only into one channel. Always, always try to explore all options, prioritize your ones, but don't be scared to just um, draw the line and say, I won't be throwing any more resources on this. Um, a big mistake we did was uh, to try to catch the whole world. At the beginning, uh, we should definitely try to identify markets you want, so local, then go regional, then country, uh, 
continent-wide and maybe global. Or for, for us, for example, the biggest market is South Africa, uh, South America. So we've decided now that most of our efforts will be in South America. Uh, because that's where the biggest amounts of losses are, that's where the governments, they don't protect the end customers by the banks, then the banks, they don't cover any, uh, any amount of money that you, get, you may get stolen. Um, and as I mentioned, just keep motivating your uh, sales channels. No. One more, sorry. Um, Yes, so just uh, keep prototyping, keep changing your product, keep, keep adapting, it, adapting it to whatever is happening and be very aware of competition. The competition, they will always try to catch up. Um, I have a friend who always likes to say, if you want to do something new, look what the others are doing and do it. It doesn't make a lot of sense, but it works. Packaging presentation, again, a bit more for the physical products. Um, it depends. We, with our product, we still have the big challenge that no, but we cannot compare it to anything else. Um, and the end customer does not know what he buys, and, and that was a big challenge for us to be uh, to overcome. But with a good uh, marketing campaign, with a bit more information out there in the web, uh, if you go on our website, you see we have a lot of blogs with uh, how skimming works, what it does, how you can protect yourself. Um, so keep on, uh, keep on uh, in your mind that packaging sells, looks sell, and that, that's the bottom line. If you cannot, you may, you may have the best product in the world, but if you cannot sell it on the, on the um, bazaar, nobody will buy it anyway. Um, then there's uh, other things like patents, uh, trademarks, uh, stuff like this. It may not apply to all of you. It depends on what type of ideas you have, but you should also explore those. Uh, I think that most of the money we decided to invest in the company have been invested into patents. It's something which is extremely expensive, extremely. Um, if you want to go on a global scale. But then again, my suggestion is go local, get your patent, for example, in Bulgaria. Then you'll know in a year or two years time whether your, uh, your idea is good and somebody will give you the money to patent it worldwide. Um, and then partners. Um, Always remember that if you have a good idea, and somebody will probably also like that good idea, don't be afraid to, to partner up with them, don't be afraid to, to ask questions and to go into partnerships, because two minds is always better than one. In our case, it was we had the protection facilities, they had the ideas. Um, nowadays, there is a lot more um, startup foundations, uh, associations, which are out there, which can give you feedback, they can help you out. There's a lot of uh, panels like this who help out um, with ideas, with the mentors, uh, and so on. So, uh, mentors and startup incubators, uh, trust me, if you have a good idea, nobody will pass up. It's a win-win for both. Only because you don't have the money at the beginning, it does not mean that somebody else doesn't have the money for it. Uh, that's pretty much it. Thank you. So if you have any questions... Okay, so the demand, the demand is, was different because there's a lot of demand for the product at the end customer, but there's absolutely no demand for the product at the middleman, which is the bank. So this is why we had to reshape our model and try to sell directly to the, to the end customer who, who had the demand for such a product, who wanted the protection. Um, just to open a note, demand is driven by the loss or the need for something. For, in our case, it's the need for protection. Because in a lot of countries, there is no, the law does not protect the end customer who loses money. Even in Bulgaria, the bank has, uh, has the right to deny to give you the first 400 lives back if you got skimmed. 
Um, so for us, the big, uh, the big difference was wh who creates the demand. Um, in Bulgaria, we sold around 15 to 20,000 units, I would say. Uh, maybe on a bigger scale, we have uh, another 60 to 70,000 units all around the world. Uh, a lot of those are in Mexico as well. Yes, so um, this was one of the last question uh, about the durability is a really important one. At the beginning, we also invested a lot of time to try to get uh, tests and certifications for the product to be able because nobody will just put a sticker on, on their bank card without any type of certification. So we actually went to a specialized uh, lab in New Zealand. We certified by Visa and MasterCard and they tested that the sticker should be more durable than the bank card. Um, and it, if and it, if it happens um, that you need to unplug it somewhere, uh, unstick it, it's actually reusable as well. <sighs> Prototyping. Uh, okay, so our case was a bit different because the big investment in prototyping is finding the equipment with which you can do the prototyping. Um, in our case, we didn't have such a problem because we already own the equipment of the printing house. Um, what, what I've heard that most people have a problem with prototyping is trying to convey your idea into someone else's mind who is able to actually rec recreate it. Um, in terms of the financial issue, usually prototyping is not that expensive. I'm not sure in terms of the software development part, if, if that is your idea, I guess over there it would be mostly the, the time issue, uh, but on the physical product is actually finding uh, someone who can produce it. And uh, again, as I said, um, it's, it's always a win-win situation if you have a good idea, and trust me, nobody will pass on it. Uh, if you make a prototype which he produces, um, he'll probably like it. 